we are live, people. We are live. Gonna get bogey my dog. in the house. Bogey in the I love house. That. That's exactly right. Good, <laughs> Good morning. morning, y'all. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. How are you guys doing? Mm, it's been, awesome. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's been <laughs> an interesting week. I said, I mean, you know, just with kind of dreary and yuck and anyway but it's, yeah. been, it's been good how about you carly how's everything going with you surviving it's a good way to be <laughs> yeah yeah that's you're exactly so right. right you're so right. That's right well before we get started i know i mentioned to the this to you guys before we um started the live but if my dog walks in and barks i apologize to everyone watching my um my babysitter is out who happens to be my <laughs> boyfriend um hunting right now so um, yes, my apologies in advance, but, um, we're excited to get started. We're excited for one of our fave people to be here today. And MC, if you could take it away and introduce Miss Carly. Well, I would love that. So guys, this is Carly Lockie and Carly has a company called Remarkable People Solutions. And so bottom line, y'all, Carly is basically a secret weapon for mm -hmm. MCKRE. You know, we have people who ask us, you know, how have we grown and what are the secrets to our success? And I would say that they are absolutely our team, our fantastic coach, Jordan Freed, and then Carly, who is a, a you know, everybody is, is really, I mean, she, she, she's like a member of our team because yep. that's how much we rely on her. So what Carly does for us, guys, I know, sorry, Carly, you're stuck with us. So um, <laughs> what Carly does for us, y'all, is that she basically solves all of our hiring problems. And I can't tell you what a huge relief this is. So essentially, from my perspective, Carly is like, a um, fairy who comes in and you tell her what your pain points are. You tell her what you need, what, ro what role do you need to fill? Just a fairy then, without the dress, man. I hope no <laughs> dress. No dress. A fairy in a leather dress. jacket. You, have to, yes. you can be a fairy Thank in you. jeans. Yes. Oh, totally. Girl. Totally. And so what Carly does is clearly with plenty of personality and fun along the way, she comes in and helps you identify what the role is that you're hiring for. And basically she handles it, y'all. I won't get into the yep. details, but I mean, essentially, gosh, Carly, one of the last times we were hiring, the last time before right now, we had what, 200 applicants and, and we yep. live interviewed five, four. Yep. I mean, yep. very just, small percentage Yeah, handles it. And there is, there is a very clear process to it. It's fascinating to be a part of and to watch as much or as little as you'd like to. And it's fantastic to be able to plug in at the end and know that you're going to end up with somebody who's a great fit for your organization. So yeah. Remarkable People Solutions is the name of Carly's business. And y'all, the cool thing is if you're watching this and you're not here, Carly, you have clients, what, all over the US, right? I mean, you don't- Correct. Have, yeah, yeah. So just an incredible resource, you guys. Okay, so I, I kind of stole your thunder on some of these questions. <laughs> Meg? Well, can I, I'm going to, I'm going to steal yes. your thunder just slightly and say, maybe we're a secret weapon, but our weapon actually is ineffective. If you, as a company owner, you're not willing to lead an enduring organization, we actually are going to be ineffective. So maybe we're the secret weapon, but there's a lot to say about Mary Cheatham. King I Willis agree. Thing. Preach, well, Carly, preach. That's you can so be kind. the fairy in the dress. I'll that's so way. kind. I love that. It's, it's a, it's a great partnership. And I know that all of your clients feel this way about you, Carly. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, who knew that you could do this? I, I, I sludged through hiring start to finish for a while and it was, it was pretty terrible. And then lots of times, you know, you end up at the end with candidates where you think, is this right? And not just, is this right for us, but is this right for them? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I mean, are they going to excel in this role? Everyone deserves to have a role in which they can knock it out of, I mean, which they can excel and then where they can knock it out of the park. So exactly. I think that that's, that's what's so important here too. So exactly. Carly, tell us from your perspective in three sentences, what yes. is it that you guys do at RPS? Awesome. Our why is just simply to provide enduring and remarkable relief through custom people and process solutions. If that's our why, our how then is to help you just select the right people and then help them to stick around just to be retained and engaged so you can maximize sales and profit. Dang, girl. I was like expecting, I was like, okay, what's next? <laughs> yeah, that was two sentences. Yeah, totally. That was that's really amazing. good. And I want to point out on that point too, I'm so sorry, Meg, that, no. that Carly is very involved with Chick-fil-A. So you do a lot of hiring for Chick-fil-A's. And I just point that out just to say, talk about a place where you know that they have excellent employees, excellent, excellent service, um, excellent systems. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that that just highlights kind of, um, you know, kind of what your abilities are and what, where uh, that, that skill set really lies. So Meg. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, Carly, one 
Oh, you you have you looked like you had something you wanted to say. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Don't apologize. I love what you have to say. Okay, am I, is it, someone was calling me as if I'm someone important. That was so nice. So I missed it. You might've asked me a question. <laughs> <laughs> no, your question's <laughs> happening now. Carly, one thing that I've learned from you that I thought was really interesting um, is the idea of stability. And that's something that you look for in, um, you've looked for in folks who are applying for jobs with MC Carry. But I'm curious if you could briefly explain um, why you think stability is such an, such an important part um, of a potential candidate. Yes, thank you so much. And certainly that is our tag word is stability, but it, it just comes from all the learning that we've had throughout the years of interviewing and hearing from other people that do this equally as great, if not better. Mm -hmm. And people really focus on character, chemistry, and competency when they're analyzing folks. Although some business owners really just spend all their time on the competency, stability is just an assessment of all three combined. Cool. So if you're looking to build your team, you want to have stable people who come alongside you and help to build your team versus the opposite, which is kind of like an implosion, right? So the person looks really nice, they're gift wrapped really well. Um, but then once you go to build your team with them, sometimes there can be an implosion. And like Mary Cheatham says, that matters so much for the company as much as it does the applicant, because if you can't feel successful or you don't feel like you're capable of doing your job, it's going to be a painful process. So that's why it's important for the companies to say yes or no so that applicants can make the best possible decisions as well. Carly, can you say those three C's again that you just said? Mm -hmm. Character, okay. chemistry, and competency. I love that. That's awesome. That's so good. It's so good. So Carly, tell us if, 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 if someone were applying for a job right now, there might be people watching this who are in the process of applying for jobs. What advice would you give them? Man, you should always interview the companies that you're applying for. You want to know who they are and what they're all about so that you also can make the best possible decision in selecting where you're going to grow. Now, so and on the other hand, Mary Cheatham, I'd love to go off of that. If there's a company owner or someone who's looking to hire someone, yeah. what would your big piece of advice be for them? So once again, all, almost all the things that I know I've learned from someone else and along the way, someone taught me as a company owner, you need to provide ESRC for your people and especially for your new candidates. And those things stand for expectations, right? Allow them to know what's expected of them each and every day, maybe in a small picture and a big picture. Mm. And then the S skills, not only should they come in with certain skills, but help them to develop their skills, right? So expectations, skills, and then resources, make sure that they have the resources to do the job that they need to do. And then the fourth one always feels like a negative one, but just remember the word consequences can be positive or negative. Hmm. So if someone knows the expectation, they have the skills and resources to do the job and they do the job, have those positive consequences, just praise them, give them small gifts, small words of encouragement, or just have a big um, type of reward at the end of a goal. Anything that is going to generate positive consequences. Wow. That's so good. That's so good. I feel like okay. I should be taking notes. What about what about a <laughs> what about what's a myth about the hiring process that you would want to squish? Yeah, if you're staring at someone's resume or anything, you know, in writing, um, you really can't make a decision based off of an application and a resume alone. Cannot. <laughs> not in totality um, who that person is. So certainly they're good starting points, but don't just assume that represents the whole person. I love that. And I think to go along with that too, Carly, one thing I've learned over the course of the last five years hiring people is, you know, you can't just have one interview peeps. You got to meet with them several times, you know, and really see how, how do things pick back up? How do you relate? How is the chemistry? How do things, you know, you, you got to let that relationship unfold a little bit before you make such a big commitment. I'm fascinated by people who interview somebody one time and then hire them and then it doesn't work out. Well, right. Yeah. <laughs> Understandably. <laughs> Carly, we have, we have two more questions for you. And one of them is okay. um, something that I'm selfishly interested in. And I know you talk yeah. to people all day, every day, um, all different types of people. And I'm curious if there's anything that you've learned about yourself from um, being in the role that you're in and, and chatting with these folks. Yes, absolutely. One, um, as a younger person, I'm in my middle thirties now, you just feel a lot of pressure to know everything, to, mm -hmm. to know the right responses or to have all the knowledge or 
feel like you've gotten somewhere at a certain age in life. But instead of feeling like you have to know everything, I found out that you just have to know how to ask the right questions. Because certainly you'll end up in a place of possibly more knowledge, but then you're also going to understand who a person is or who a company is or how they operate. Just asking the right questions is almost paramount to knowing everything, which is obviously impossible. I would like to take that and type it out and frame it and put it on my desk. It's, it's so true. Yeah, it's so true. And I, I, it's, it's interesting because this keeps coming up in my life. Like a lot of the podcasts I listen to or books I'm reading right now, it keeps coming back to the quality of your life and the quality of the people around you and the quality of the team that you build and the quality of everything is in direct correlation to the quality of the questions that you ask. That's really cool. Oh. I mean, awesome. it's true, that right? I mean, either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and it's so true when you think about it, you know, like I think, you know, like I feel that way, even, you know, if, if Chip and I are off kilter a little bit or th- don't totally feel connected, then I think, well, what have I asked him aside from, you know, what does he want for dinner? You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, what, what, yeah. what, what do I think I'm going to get? That's not how to make your marriage successful. Okay. <laughs> actually, actually, if, if someone wanted to just ask me that question and that were the only question, they would have a very successful marriage with me. <laughs> Because right. that is how much I care about what we're having for dinner. You got it. But I, you know, yeah, totally. And so Carly, what about somebody who's at any age, right? At any, any mm-hmm. point in, in their lives and in their career, if they're already in a role, yeah. but they want to thrive and continue to grow in that role, what advice would you give to them? Man, don't be, don't be scared of trying things and failing Um, I think trying and failing, failing is a huge part of life. And if you don't know how to fail well, you're probably not going to be set up for success, but really in the middle of failure, listen, there's going to be people in your life who are willing to guide you and tell you what went well and what didn't. Um, You got to listen to those folks. It may not feel comfortable, but be okay to be uncomfortable and be in the midst of a failure, but listen when you're there. Mm, a lot of people forget to do the listening part in the middle of that. Yeah. I certainly do. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. I think, I think that's so good. And, and I I know, again, another, another little thing that I think ties in so nicely with that, that I think about all the time is in the book, the one thing by Gary Mm -hmm. Keller, Mm -hmm. one of the stories that they tell is they talk about how they had this, this pottery class and they had, let's say it was 50 people who they said, make as many pots as you possibly can today. And then they had another class where they said, make the very best pot that you can today. And at the end of the day, bar none, the group that had the best pots at the end were the ones that made the most. And so the point is they weren't waiting until they were ready to nail it, right? They just had to do it and do it and do it and try it and fail and try it and fail, right? And listen or look or learn within that process. And then by the end of the day, they were the ones who were the most successful. So I think that's such a great, I love that. Yeah. Wow. Y'all, yeah. I feel like I'm in a therapy session and I love every <laughs> second of it. Amazing. I'm my feet up, y'all. I know. Well, well, speaking of things that make me happy, um, yeah. Carly, we have our final question for you. And Mary yeah. Cheatham, I want to ask you too, but I want to ask Carly first. Yeah. What is saving your life right now, Carly? <gasps> oh my gosh. Guys, just being transparent, oh. honesty, being able to live life out in the open without feeling like I'm hiding things. Now, maybe there's a couple little secret sauces that I'm keeping hidden, but otherwise the transparency just gives you relief. It gives you a sense of knowing that you're known by others and then you don't feel so alone, right? So that's just how I live my life. Maybe to the chagrin of some of my friends or family that I'm a little too honest. <laughs> so, so Carly, have you, have you always been that way? I mean, is, is, this a, is this a new development that means that it's saving your life or is just something that you're very aware is integral to you being happy? I think that I lived life in a different level of honesty when I was younger and immature, Mm -hmm. where I thought you just say whatever comes to your mind. But what I realized, and I'm still recognizing that is when I'm able to just be transparent and allow people to see both the good, the bad, and some of the ugly, not all of it, it it just allows me to be, to deal with the real problems or the real successes in life. And I don't have to pretend. So I just deal with the actual root of problems versus, you know, whatever I perceive to be the actual problem, but it was just a symptom of the problem. Now, when we get off this and if my husband hears this or what have you, there's more for work for Carly to do on being <laughs> transparent and honest, but I've at least made it to this point that. in my life. That's good. That's good. Mary Cheatham, what about you? You know, I'm going to say that what's saving my life is thinking about the future. 
I mm. feel like that all of a sudden now, and I mean that and on a very, very superficial level, full transparency, I mean, in terms of, I'm so excited. I, I want to go somewhere. I want to do yeah. something. I want to, I want to, I can I feel like that we are going to see a new age of this with this, with everything with COVID, the fact that the vaccines, my parents got their, their first oh, one, good, 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 good. you know, I don't know. I just feel like I know, I know that it's not just going to disappear. And I know that we can't begin to understand what the reverberations and the impacts are that are going to be felt. But I feel like that we are turning a corner and looking at something new. It's January of 2021. I just feel like there's a lot out there. And I think we all have a much better perspective from which to jump in and just take advantage of, of everything that's to come. So I so agree. Yeah. That's fine. Well, how about you, Meg? well, um, in full transparency, mine has, um, <laughs> something to do with lasagna. I made a thank <laughs> you. I made a thank you lasagna on Sunday, last Sunday oh, <clears throat> for my boyfriend's parents. They watched our dog, um, while we were out for a little bit and it, it was my mom's recipe. I had never made it before by myself. And I made a thank you lasagna and it saved my life this week because of leftovers. It was wonderful. Oh, that's awesome. so good. That, yes. And that sense awesome. of accomplishment. Doesn't it feel so good to make something? I bet you nailed it. I bet it was delicious. Y'all, it took me four hours to make one lasagna. Yeah, lasagna is no joke. Oh, it's really not, but it was delicious. So that saved my life this week. Although I want to take both of yours and, and retweet it. I agree with both of you. I love lasagna. <laughs> yes, that's good. Yes. Well, thank you, Carly. I know I'm kind of sad. Like, I don't want you to leave, but I know it's supposed to be espresso and not like, you know, extra grande latte. So right. there you go. That'd be a little too much of Carly anyway. And I'm a member of your team now. I know. Apparently, so. I know. You're so right. Surprise. <laughs> Thanks, Carly. And, and, and just, just to recap, Carly, we'll be talking to you because yet again, we are hiring. Exactly right. That's right. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks for all you do, guys. Thank Have you a great guys. Weekend. See ya. Bye.